Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraj here, back with a new video lesson for you all. Uh, before I get on to the lesson, do subscribe to the channel, alright? There's plenty of you, quite a number of you actually, watching without subscribing, so hit that subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss anything, alright? So, I've been um, working with a few beginner students or students who are um, on that beginner to intermediate trajectory. And one thing I found that I am discussing a lot with them is note durations, right? Note values, um, long notes versus short notes. So I want to use certain examples using a major scale and discuss how the note duration can really have a big impact on the way anything sounds, a piece of music, a phrase, a lick, or whatever you want to call it, and think of it like there's a drastic effect in the way your ideas and the projection can affect the way it sounds, okay? So a lot of times, um, I remember working on certain ideas. Let's say something like a two octave G minor triad here, okay? Like something like... From Bach. Um... What I found was that when I would play triads, this is very early on, my notes never connected one into the other. So it was always very broken. And that was also because I had a few issues in the way I would just play bass lines, okay? For instance, let's take something very simple, like one, six, four, five. Okay, so my first problem was that I always played a dead note before the downbeat. One, two, three, four. I'm exaggerating right now, but I guess you will hear it. So whether it's an actual pitch or ghost note, I always had this. I had to eliminate that, so I had to really learn to focus on playing just downbeats. And long notes. So playing long notes of any sort is very hard because you really have to focus on how the notes flow into each other no matter what you're doing whether it's arpeggios or scales arpeggios so, uh, shit I thought I could keep doing this but I couldn't anyway the point is focus on how you connect from one note to the other in a scale. Make sure there's no cut off point between the two notes and the consecutive notes have continued to follow. Same thing with your triads. Your seventh chord. Same thing, all right? The goal is continuity. So coming back to when or how should we incorporate long and short notes. So take any simple bass line. Okay, let's just take something, single note, right, C. So just play eighth notes, start long, always start long. So, of course, you can accent the note. I think I did talk about this on a video before. But then, that's a long short. 
Long short, long short. I can flip it. Okay, so what that starts to do is it gives you a sense of pulse, but also gives you a very nice groove, a nice pocket. And then you have these kind of things. This is like the upbeats, eighth notes. So it's short, long, short, 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 long, boom, 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 boom. So that open note or long note opens up the groove a little. So in my head, it's like the hi hats. So the long and open uh, open notes or short and dead notes directly corresponds with the drum groove. Okay, which is why certain styles of music are super challenging to play. And right from the top of my head right now, one of the most challenging grooves I've tried playing over the years is um, Meshuga songs. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I love Meshuga. I love them to death. I watched them last month. I still can't, I cannot get over it. Um, but it's hard because their grooves are so syncopated, but there's a lot of long notes to the syncopation and very trickily placed short notes, which makes it ultra challenging to play on the bass, let alone any instrument, but especially finger style, you tend to develop certain tendencies where you're not able to control how long or short your notes are, all right? So this is a very simple uh, lesson I wanted to get out there. Simple, but extremely effective, all right? So since I mentioned Meshuga, I think at some point I'm going to definitely do a lesson or two or 10 on them. So if you do have a favorite Meshuga song or you happen to listen to them and there's a song you're interested in, let me know and we could possibly have a series or maybe a couple of lessons on them at the very least. All right, so that's all for this lesson. Um, once again, do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the shed until the next one. Peace.